Go, we ain't gonna hang on too long into the Phantom timeline, but you know, we're gonna hit a few pages, probably like three or four pages of that. And then from that, we're gonna bounce to the Demonology book. Y'all straight with that? What's happening, Taz? Y'all straight with that? With that class curriculum? Fernando said, just trying to get interactions with stupid statements next. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, cool, cool. Hola, what's happening? So I'm here for it. Let's go. Facts. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. The body def definitely adapts to environment like the peoples from Machu Picchu in the high altitude. What does that got to do with anything we talking about? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what does that got to do with anything we're talking about. Y'all just be coming in here saying shit, right? Have I heard about Have I heard about the Tuscaroans? Yes, I definitely heard about the Tuscaroans. What's that in the aura in the building? Peace, peace. Trying to see where, where we going with some of these questions before we get started. 11 minutes. All right, we're about to get started here in a sec. Bet High Learning Book Club. We're getting into our nightly recap, okay? So peace, peace. Welcome to High Learning Book Club. It's your boy, Signs for the Conscious Mind, checking in. You already know what it is when I come across your few page. Stop. Tap in. Dope gems. Dope historical facts. Y'all already know what time it is. So like I told people already, uh, tonight, tonight's class, we're going to recap the Phantom Timeline. We're probably going to cover like three, four pages of that. And then from that, we're going to make a smooth transition back into the King James Daemonology book. All right, we're, we're we're now we're on the section that talk about necromancy and um, succubus and incubies and and all the things like that. So, roll it if you got it, pull it if you got it, buckle up, let's get into some shit. All right. Who's in my box? Black Girl Rock. I don't know if you requested to come up. Walk on Water, what's happening? Hold on, what's going on? Turn off the camera, man. What the hell? I turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you to send that request to come up, but... Uh, um. If y'all can hold y'all request till the end, I'll bring everybody up to the panel. So first thing first, right? All right. First thing first, before we get into the Phantom Timeline, we must understand that they have you reading history books. Right. They have you reading history books about individuals that didn't even exist. All right. Let's make that clear. All right. You say it again. They have you reading history books about individuals that didn't even exist. And when I say they, we should already know who we're talking about. Right. Um, if you don't know who we're talking about, let me know in the comments. I'll tell you who we're talking about. But for those who know and know, they, I got they actually in the middle of the screen. Right. The top middle part. They. Right. They got you reading books about individuals that didn't even exist such as Christopher Columbus right Christopher Columbus is not just a mythical figure but he is a myth he never even existed except in the minds of the 16th century forgers of the Vatican Italy and other countries right figure in the middle top middle figure right 
they also what's happening daughters of the most high peace 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 i got you cvc in the building so they giving you pictures of tartaria right to the right but they're telling you that people came over here on wooden boats bottom picture right bottom picture and top picture do not go with each other something couldn't have happened all right these same people gave you uh the monkey ancestor these same people gave you uh fake pictures of historical figures such as abraham lincoln most of your history is not real all right y'all got it we good gotta check in on y'all we straight nobody glitching yet All right, let's get this paper plane in the air. He said, we good, cool, cool. Let's get this paper plane in the air. There we go. All right. So these same individuals falsified history, created a timeline, and invented characters for the story, right? Okay. All right. So let's get into this phantom timeline. All right, it's getting to this phantom timeline, right? Y'all want to screenshot it? Dope book, Emmett Scott. All right, dope book, Emmett Scott. <coughs> A guide to the phantom dark ages. Now, if somebody so kindly, if y'all don't mind, can y'all let me know the time frame of the dark ages? What time period was it? The Dark Ages. If anybody could look that up for me real quick, put it in the comments, you know, if you don't mind. So we can get an idea of the time period. You know, we got to get all type of understandings, right? A guide to the Phantom Dark Ages. When was the Dark Ages? What's that in the Memnon in the building? When was the Dark Ages? When was the Dark Ages? Roll it if you got it. Roll it if you got it. <coughs> dark Ages. <coughs> hold on. Oh shit, hold on. Dark Ages, 500 BC. God damn. <coughs> what timeline you on, fam? <laughs> Damn, Brightborn, <coughs> Dark Ages. <coughs> oh, shit. Boy, you almost made me choke on that one. This is about to be a short live. <laughs> this is going to be a short live. We almost passed out. Hold on. Mm. All right. <laughs> 700 AD. So what, 700 AD to about what, 1500s? Like 500, 700 AD to the 1500s? After the fall of Rome, before the Renaissance. Oh, so from 500 to 1492. Okay. I'm just trying to get a I'm trying to get a, a good time period before we get into it. All right. All right. Let's get into it. Let's flip the page. Fifth to the fifteenth centuries. So four hundred AD to the fourteen hundreds. All right. We got us a nice time period. So let's get into it. Let's flip the page. We're talking about a guide to the Phantom Dark Age.
Mm-hmm. Chippewa, peace, peace. What's happening, Chippewa in the building? All right. So, so flipping the page. Hold on. I don't know why it's like that. Let me see if I can make it smaller. I can't make can't make it smaller, but we good. I got y'all. I know what it says. I know what it says. We good. So flipping the page, right? And it says academia has a problem. All right. We talking about the guide to the Phantom Dark Ages. Academia has a problem. What is the problem? Well, the problem begins, right? It first begins by. It first begins by first highlighting some very important points that will explain my reasons of giving this point in history and therefore compelling me to write this book with academia. There is an understanding that no ancient author should ever be viewed right as absolute and complete truth without any omissions or biases. However, when controversy information is discovered, about certain subjects, as in the issues being investigated here, the understanding seems to take a back seat. Preconceptions regarding the period of um, Greco Jewish War, um, the Spanish Jewish War, and the authors who recorded events need to be put aside, as what fully become clear is the fact that. All right, peace, peace. What's happening, Rich Soul? It says they need to fully become clear is the facts that one, the authors were not who they claim to be, right? We already know that because we know Flavius Josephus had hundreds of aliases, right? Benjamin Franklin had hundreds of aliases. How we know that Benjamin Franklin wasn't an alias? How we know that these are their real names of these people, right? How we know they even exist, huh? So big game, right? So the first one is the authors were not who they claim to be. Number two, they were not writing in an honest and forthright manner. Number three, they had ulterior motives leading them to mislead the readers or listeners. All right. Number four, they were closely related to each other. All right. Something that we didn't already put together. Right. All right. These people are closely related to each other. And therefore, were writing in concert with each other, right? Number five, they were not writing in a time where everyone could publish for public consumption. This was the case. There was no published freedom of speech that existed in those times. Only royalties could publish works for the publics, right? And number six, they were using literary devices and other methods in which to deceive the masses. Peace. What's happening, Lilith? Child of the soul. Carl, what's happening? All right. So these is the facts that people have to come to grips with. All right. So though there were no specific rules regarding who could publish written works for the public consumption within the Roman Empire, both historical and religious, the only people to have been able to do so were those who were educated and wealthy. Publish and capture was the product of those who were in power and in depth to eradicate research and cover controversial facts regarding the history on particular individuals that has um, educational scholars for the extraordinary amount of time. The individuals is the famous, right? The individuals is the famous Christian Judah Jesus, right? What's that in the peace, peace? The information presented in this book cannot be discovered by reading and simply believing what you read, as Sir Ronald Symes once stated in his paper, right? All right. 
So that's just giving you a little cover story about it, right? Academia, we got a problem. problem is we talking about the phantom timeline you see what the problem is with history right so it says that uh, the biographies of the Roman emperors the same methods have been used to reveal the names using uh, Nemen culture or however you say it in the first and second century CE Right. The 10 ways sign gave are as follows. Right. Indistinctive names, imperial genitalia, uh, names from earlier Vantes, current and favorite names, the names of the authors, the names of classical authors, names from literature, names of fun and fantasy, perverted names, fictitious characters and their names or attributes or both resemble Eminent families in the Roman, um, rich, the, the fucking wealthy family. I don't know why I got tongue tied right there. Aristocracy. There we go. I don't know why I got tongue tied right there. So what they saying is that most of these fictional characters inside of these stories, a lot of them are fake characters, but their names and attributes resemble prominent families, right? So the character might be faking the story. But they are a symbology of actual people. All right. We good. We got it. Peace was saying this worthy. I wanna, did y'all miss this live when I covered this? I just want to make sure who, who all who all was in the live when I covered the Phantom timeline and who missed it. Okay, cool, cool. I just want to make sure who I just want to see who all missed it so I know how far to go with this because you know this was a recap. But for those who missed it, we'll get into it. Get into it. All right, cool, cool. I got y'all. We'll get into it. <coughs> so dropping down, and it says the books undermine, right? What's that, NK Real? OCO, OCO. So it says the book undermine the establishment, understanding the Roman history presented to the Romans and a German classical scholar, politician, and archaeologist who was regarded as of the greatest classics of the 19th century, right? 1800s. Syme wrote, quote, the Roman constitution, right? The Roman constitution, which is something that we're going to read tomorrow morning because it's, it's, it's kind of dope. But the Roman constitution was a screen Right. Which horrified those who had studied the works of Momnison. But Syme was Syme was saying that Emperor Augustus, previously known as Octavian, supposedly um, restoration of the representative in past tense or pretense on which he had built a monarchy based on personal relationships. Right. With Rome's political families. Symes expertise regarding family, I mean, famous Romans allowed him to practice what is known as prosophagy, prosophography. Well, my down, they be coming up with some names on this motherfucker. But anyways, at the highest level, which is the investigation. Right. So what is that? It is the investigation of common characteristics of historical people by collective study of their lives. All right. And analysis. All right. So it is Symes expertise that has helped historians make further discoveries in finding those concerning in situational families. Right. Like the Kaplanus Peso family. Right. And we know who Kaplanus, Kaplanus is. Right. That's Flavius Josephus. And we already know what Flavius Josephus did. He was the author of the New Testament. Right. All right. So the Flavius Josephus or the Piso family as prevented in the writing. Syme wrote 
many extremely important papers on ancient Roman history and individuals who lived at that time. He wrote articles that were published in the journals of studies and well-known books within the academia called the Roman Papers, which is a dope book. We're going to get into that. All right. Thank y'all for the gifts. Appreciate it. We're going to flip, flip in the page. <coughs> so now, right? So now Pharisees persisted for many years. And it is at that point, the New Testament starts circulating is a key factor in unraveling the mystery surrounding the origins of Christianity. And to reveal before the New Testament emerged, Judea was at war with Rome over religious political issues, right? Always remember that. Many conservative scholars and academics still view the war just as a rebellion. Also reject the idea that the New Testament could ever be a Roman creation, right? So modern mainstream is the ones that's rejecting the idea that the New Testament was created by Rome, right? Peep game. Hmm. I wonder why. So persuading many scholars are themselves religious. It has been argued that the Romans were and knowledgeable enough regarding the Jewish writings to create a religion, right? They were knowledgeable enough to create a religion like this. But the Cleponis Peso family, or Flavius Josephus and them, were related to the family of Harold the Great, right? So Flavius Josephus and the Peso family were related to Harold the Great, right? El Negros, huh? All right. And it will be shown, meaning that they were descendants of both Roman and Jewish royalty, huh? And it is of this family was highly educated and possessed the knowledge to create Eight, the New Testament story, as their relatives were the ones in control of the Jewish religious texts. Remember, during this time, only the wealthy families was controlling books that was being published in religious texts. So they are the ones that start rewriting things because it was in their possessions. Peep game, right? So the relatives were the ones in control of the Jewish religious texts. All right. And I also argue that the Herodians assisted the clear opponents, Peso family or Flavius Josephus in the creation of the scripture. All right. And her argument against Roman authorship is that the Romans knew one thing well, and that's how to fight. I have to agree on that point. But the Roman aristocracy was very intelligent, too. And it is no way that they have been able to build an empire and maintain it without knowledge and power to do so. Another argument comes in the form of just why Rome wanted to persecute the very people who were following what they had written. Right. But as noted above, the persecutions are not what they appear to be. Huh. And could like to rise a few points that have been very important factors throughout this investigation. And there is not one word explaining how these scriptures were obtained and proven their authenticity and nothing was allowed to leak out as to the method used to compile the collections of beautiful tales made up of crude religious and phallic stories. Right. And the mentions of persecutions come after the fact and after the New Testaments emerged from the Roman historians, right? That's when you start getting persecution stories, huh? And the mentions of Christians themselves or Christos and Charitius or Christius came from Roman historians again after the New Testament emerged, huh? Scholars and academias have not identified who the authors of the Gospels were, right? Since it's is that their names are Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. But because of Creon Katia, it appears within the titles of the Gospels. So we know that those are not the authors because the names are in Greek. All right? All right. So the individual named Paul 
never claimed to have met Jesus. Listen, they say the individual named Paul, he ain't never claimed to meet Jesus, but claimed to have received information from Jesus by speaking to him. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> you ain't never met the dude, but you got information from him though, right? <laughs> hey y'all. Hey, I got message from Big Meech, but I ain't never meet the nigga though, right? All right, one of them, huh? All right. Yeah. Even in the Bible, he never met Jesus. Facts. Right? Even in the Bible, he never met Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Inside the book itself, he never met him. But inside the book, again, it tells you he spoke to him. And that's the spell. Right? So for a historical investigator being told that some of the information from an individual who is unalived does not count as reliable evidence. All right. <laughs> and there is no reliable evidence that a Christian sect existed before the New Testament emerged. Paul says nothing about them. Right. Because they told you that the whole Christian and everything came from who? What? Paul. But when you go back into Paul's story, he don't mention nothing about Christians, Christo, or Christ. Peep game, right? That's inside the book as well. I'm trying to figure out, did people really read the book or was you just listening to your pastor because he talked good? Right. Let's continue going. Right. Wow. 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 What's happening? So now more is to sharpen to make new points. Bruno was saying that he had observed that even the same phrases were used. The context was changed, but that is someone repeatedly in such writings. Listen to what they're saying. They saying in most of the books in the New Testament. They're repeating the same phrases over and over again. They just changing the context in words. Right. Hmm. Isaiah 45, 7, explain anything, everything. What's happening, beautiful goddess? Najee was good. All right. Let's see what they talking about. Let's get deep. So they said that. Most of most of the book, the New Testament is it's all the same phrases, stories. They just change the text and how it was written and that it is someone repeatedly in such writings reference, quote, Christ and the Caesar, right? Christ and the Caesar, Bruno, 1877, translated by Frank E. Scott, Alexander in 19. 98, right? Christ and the Caesar, right? For respected individuals that shared the same view as Bruno Bauer, including John Williso and William Edward Hartpole, uh, William, an Irish historian essay, uh, quotes, quote, from the vast mass of evidence which has been collected from the writings of public divines, and from decrees of Catholic Council during the space of many centuries, right? During the space of many centuries, the inscriptions or the descriptions in the Bible from what complements or complaints of the prophets are in an exact replica of what was going on in Rome. Hmm. During the creation of the Bible and in Europe till quite um, my bad. During the creation of the Bible and in Rome till quite, John Colenso defined as the Queen's Bishop as it was Queen Victoria herself, right? When you see Queen's Bishop, that's Queen Victoria herself, who was also on a mission to, quote, enlighten Africa from the locality of NATO in Zululand. Huh? Shaka Zulu? And it was 
uh, what's that? Mathematicians and theologians and biblical scholars and social activists who did similar research, churches claim. It was Willis the translating of the Bible done in consultation with the Zulu conversion, right? Many questions were raised to which Coliso had difficulty in answering truthfully, right? He had the Bible contain many things that were odd with new scientific discoveries, right? So he had a whole different Bible that niggas ain't see, right? This one got scientific discoveries in it and everything, huh? All right. So, and he was taught that, quote, the Bible is none other than the word of God. Absolute, right? Absolute faltering supreme, unquote. His mind began to fill with doubts. Colisio published his um, commentary of Epistle to the Romans in 1861, which enraged fellow bishops and who called it a revolt against the faith of Christendom, unquote. He would attract even more anger when he wrote his, um, his five books of the Old Testament Bible, right? And he told a friend that although he believed wholeheartedly in God, right, the pedal ox, as not usually or personally have been written by Moses, though, right? He is like a lot of this wasn't even written by Moses or by anyone acquainted personally with it to profess, to describe and further that the Mosiotic or Mosiotic narrative. But whoever written it imparting to us, as I fully believe it does, revelations of a divine will and character, right? And regarding as historically true. Unquote. Colisio's book was first published in South Africa. Huh? All right. South Africa, huh? Huh. They're doing a lot of publishing in Africa, right? And they were determined to stop from being published in England, right? So you stop publishing these books in England and you start publishing them in South Africa, right? <laughs> mm. The church, the church persecuted in civil courts up to the House of Lords to ruin him for exposing his claims as a fraud assembled his facts in such a masterly form that even a bishop ruled House of Lords have had his statement as the truth. The Old Testament was edited, right? The Old Testament was edited most likely from the investigated in his book and was rewritten at a later date to include items and messengers that those texts had foretold the coming of Jesus. For an example, there are some edits of the Old Testament that are different and do not have the items where it was added later in the revised Old Testaments, right? Jeremiah chapter 53 is a perfect example if you want to compare Old Testaments and revised Old Testaments, right? Hmm. I'm saying that, Auntie. Tired Thomas in the building. Auntie. So, yeah, so we have to be careful on what you're getting, right? So, for an example, they says, right, and taking up the claims, we are told in the form of two contradictory accounts, one by Christian Ezobus and the other by an individual named Lac. Tanius, a tutor of Constantine, right? And that Constantine saw a vision in the sky which led to his conversion to Christianity, right? That's what they tell you, right? And it says that Constantine saw this vision in twelve in 312 CE, but just before the battle, right? Just before the battle, right? Uh, the Sephardic Jews in Rome, right? So he saw this vision quote unquote that made him convert to Christianity just before the battle of the Sephardic Jews in Rome, huh? How coincidentally, right? So and it was essentially a battle between Constantine and Emperor Maxitinius over of Rome. All right. Flipping the page.
Alright, here we go. So that was like a little introduction to, you know, just to give you an insight on the type of investigative work that we dealing with, with a lot of these authors, right? So it ain't just one author, it's a lot of authors. I'm talking about, they've been talking about this shit since 1860s, 1850s. They're like, hey man, these people is lying, dog. But y'all know how the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers roll, right? Y'all know how these royal families roll, you know, you know, people get shadow banned, right? So just go ahead and get into chapter one, right? That was the introductory. Y'all good, y'all straight, roll it if you got it. Y'all enjoying it? Just want to make sure. Those who who's just now getting into it with me, is it making sense, y'all understanding? Anything I need to break down a little bit more? Ain't Chippewa said she good. King David was handing. Peace, peace, fam. Adrian was handing. Ain't see you slide in. Insightful was good. Was good. Peace, peace. D's truth in the building. <sighs> South Coast was good. Was good. South Coast. I don't think I spoke to you. I ain't see you slide in. Peace. So let's get into it, right? Let's get into it, right? So now it's about to get juicy. So chapter one, the Dark Ages, right? The Dark Ages. So the origin and development of the Dark Age idea, right? So the term Dark Age or Dark Period was first introduced into um, his story by historians during the 14th century, right? The 1300s, all right? So the first time a person ever heard or mentioned the Dark Age was in the 14th century, right? The 1300s. That's a little odd, but just keep going. By the Italian scholar Petric, or Petric, or however you say it, right? The term was not originally pejorative, but reflected merely the fact that little was known of European history in the centuries between the fall of the Western Empire and the fall of the Western Empire, right? Western Empire? What empire are they talking about? An event normally dated to 476. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <clears throat> My fault. So, and an event normally dated to 476. In the beginning of the 11th century, right? It seemed that few great moments were built after the fall of Rome. Though the castles and cathedrals raised by the European princes from the 11th century onward still adorned the landscape of the continent. What continent they talking about, y'all? Because, I mean, shit, when we look around, we still got these so-called Roman buildings, you know, Tartaria buildings, right? I'm talking about these things old. All right. Are they talking about over here? Or they talking about over there, right? Remember, Washington, D.C. was called Rome, too. Peep the jug. You got to ask questions like this. They talking about over there or over here? So, Pete Gang, right? So, castles and cathedrals raised by European princes in the 11th century and onward still adorn the landscape of the continent. These latter men presided over a real civilization, though it seemed to be a civilization of somewhat inferior kind to that which had flourished under Caesar. That at least was the general opinion in Europe by the time of the Renaissance. The philosophers they read and admired tend to be those of Greece and Rome, right? And the Renaissance was a period which self-consciously sought to revive the glories of the classical ages, right? right? With the evident of the reformation, right? With the evident of reformation in the 16th century, 16th century, 1500s, reformation. Reformation, let me see something. Reformation, that sound familiar.
reformation. All right, reformation. All right, so going here to the Catholic Gazette, February 1936, the Jewish peril in the Catholic Church. All right, peace, peace. What's happening, Fox? All right, we're going here. If y'all want to screenshot it, I'll leave it up for a little second. Because that word reformation sounds familiar. And they said in the 1500s. All right. And this book is about little hat people, right? Y'all know the little hat people. We ain't going to say too much, but one of their names is Jacob. Right, Jacob? It's one of their names, just to let you know who we're dealing with, right, when we read this. So, Reformation. <coughs> All right, let's see what they're talking about here. Formation. Mm. Reformation. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to find it. All right. So, inside of this quote, that is quoted by Z Nation, little hat people, you know, Archie Rockville, you know, y'all, y'all get it. We ain't gotta go too deep, right? When we say they, right? This when we say they, uh, Vatican Catholic Church, you know, they. So inside of they newspaper, they tell you, right? They tell you that we have made it a great honor. Right. We have made it an honor, a great honor for the Gentiles to join us in their in our organizations, which are thanks to our gold and flourish now more than ever. Yet it remains our secret that those Gentiles who betray their own and most precious interests by joining us in our plot shall never know that those associations are of our creation. All right. They of their creation and they should never suspect that we are using them to build their own jails and forging their own servitude or civility or slavery. All right. We are the masters of reformation. There we go. We are the masters of reform. We talking about we talking about little hat people. All right. Y'all know who it is. They right. They told you we are the masters. All right. We boast. We boast of being the masters, the creators of the reformation. So whenever you see that word reformation, just know who you're talking about and understand reformation is no different than reconstruction. All right. So going back into the Phantom timeline, we're talking about them reconstructing history. All right. So we talking what's happening, Regal? So the Phantom of the Dark age, right? We're talking there. There, we're talking about how they reformed history, right? We're talking about the masters and the creators of reformation. So, with the evidence of the reformation in the 16th century, 1500s, the term dark age began to take on distinctively negative connotations. Protestant writers from the 17th century onward would increasingly view everything between Constantine and the Reformation as a long and tedious epoch of barbarism and ignorance 
And the same process was to continue during and after the epoch. He said pretty words for lies. I know, right? You know, they they always got a fancy word, you know. You didn't steal it, you discovered it, right? You ain't lie, you just reformed it, right? <laughs> Peace, peace. What's up? I'm highly favored in the building. All right. Peace, peace. The Russian in the building. Regal in the building. I see y'all. Glad y'all in here. Shout out to all the new folks. If y'all new in the building, let me know y'all new to the page. I hope y'all enjoying the live and the read. Shout out to everybody that's in here. Those who missed when I covered this. I hope y'all enjoying it. I hope it's connecting some dots. I hope it's blowing your mind. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Everything is everything. So let's continue reading about this phantom timeline, right? So now, the enlightenment when men such as Voltaire and Kant saw the whole of what we now call the Middle Ages, right? The Middle Ages and the Dark Ages is the same period, right? They just told you. It, what we call now the Middle Ages, they the same time period, all right? And it stretch all the way into colonial times, right? Columbus, 1492, he was lost. Yeah, they created that shit too. You know what I'm saying? What's that in the district soldier in the building? Yeah, they created that shit too, right? I'm trying to tell you, is Columbus is not real. There's no such person called Columbus. They made that nigga up. And you know what's crazy about it? The deeper you dig into Columbus, you'll find out that the three ships that they told you about Columbus, they're named after Roman aristocratic daughters. Right. So this is why I say Columbus was more likely probably a steel boat, maybe during steel boat airs. It was probably that. But it probably wasn't no person. Right. Good ship. Jesus, you know, ship of Columbus and you know, Maria and all of that, which are Roman aristocratic daughters names. P game. So I said, hey man, that, that man ain't there's no such thing as Columbus. They made that nigga up too. So now let's keep going though. So by the 19th century, right? The Iron Man really than Columbus, I'm trying to tell you. Shit. I'd rather go to a hey, look, look, Swarthy, look. I'd rather go to the mall and tell Santa Claus what I want for Christmas before I believe in Columbus, my G. I'm just keeping it 100. So by the 19th century, right, the 1800s, 19th century is the 1800s. So by the 1800s, 19th century, however, it had become increasingly evident that it was impossible to classify everything between the end of the Western Empire and the Renaissance of the Dark Age. Now, stop. The only reason why I keep asking, are they talking about America? Is Rome in America? Because we are known as what? The Western civilization, right? That's that's what they call America. That's what they call our culture and shit, right? The Western world, the Western civilization, right? Rome, we always been in Rome. Rome ain't never fail. Rome told you Rome fail. Listen, yeah, yeah, understand where you getting these stories from. They're writing this shit, right? They don't want, yeah, man, we fail our empire. Look, the, the empire still going on, but they, t yeah, man, you know, shit, we fail uh, 476, but you in the 1800s and shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this happened and do, 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 do. You know, because when you can manipulate a person's mind, you can actually, um, when you can manipulate a person's mind and thought and perspective, you can transport a person in time. The first time travel is consciousness, right? People be talking about time traveling machines and shit. The first form of time traveling is consciousness. This is why y'all got to get that CIA document called Holographic Universe. Go get the CIA document about astral projections and shit like that, right? The first time travel is conscious.
So if I can fabricate the timeline and make the story good enough to narratively transport you, I got you. Right? Yeah. The Gateway Project. Yeah. CIA Document Gateway Project too. Yeah. Pete Gang. Yeah. The same documents that say we can walk through walls. Right? Flash. What's happening, Voodoo? Voodoo child in the building. So I say, right? Flash, right? The superhero Flash shows you this, right? In order for Flash to get through the wall, he had to vibrate at a certain frequency. He had to phase through the wall, which means what did they tell him? You have to mole uh, molecular vibrate at the same or even faster than the object you're trying to go through. You know what I'm saying? That's what they told him. All right, so peep game. So, um, but let's continue going on this phantom timeline, though, on how the Vatican and the little hat people fabricated this damn history on you because I'm trying to tell you a large part of colonial times didn't happen. Most people are on the landmass where they originally had have always been, but they playing with your consciousness. So let's keep going though, right? So they said that, I see where we at, do, 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 do. So the barbarian princes, right? Who had taken control of the Western Providence in the fifth century were not the mindless destroyers it had once been believed. On the contrary, they adopted Roman civilization as quickly as they could and did everything in their power to uphold Roman institutions and customs. They also continued by and large to regard themselves as functionaries of the empire and minted gold coins embezzled with the image of the emperor or Constantine on them. From him, they accepted Roman titles and names and proudly displayed those on their monuments. And they continued to build monuments in the Roman style. These chiefly comprised luxurious churches, which is in America, but also included impressive circular buildings. The Frankish king of Gaul, uh, Calo Frick, in 561, or is it 1561, right? Was said to explain to have built two ample theaters at one Paris and another at Socians, right? Just pause right there. What's happening, Courtney? Courtney in the building. Trill, what's happening? Peace, peace. Listen to what they're saying. They're talking about in the 500s, they building ample theaters. How advanced we talking about back then that they don't want you to know? What did they really destroy from you? Uh, what did they really hide? Did it really look like the Wild Wild West and you know, wooden boats and pilgrim and organ trails and shit? Or was motherfuckers damn near phasing through walls and doing all type of shit back then? Man, you got be game, man. Something they ain't telling you. But it's something that they scared of. Because that's how they act when you pay attention. People that do all of these things to a specific group of people, it's because they scared of what a certain demographic of persons or people can do. Right? It's no telling what they seen when they came over here looking at us. We don't know. They got microfilm. They got videos. But they'll never show you. Or will they? Something about this AI is a little too real, huh? P. Gang, who created this AI video shit. All right, so continuing on, right? So at the other end of the scale, the period we now call the High Middle Ages, from the 11th to the late 10th century onwards, could no longer in the light of archaeological and other research be considered part of a dark age. The great... Uh, cathedrals and castles of this time, which still stand in all their glory throughout Europe, revealed in advance and in ways astonishing civilization. It was recognized for an example that the medieval 
cathedrals represented an advance on the Roman architecture. And it was conceded that the Romans would have been incapable of building such structures. So who built these structures? Right? Peace, peace. What's happening, Anthony? They say that the Romans ain't built this shit. <laughs> Them niggas was incapable. So who built these structures? All right. Indeed, in many areas of technology, the Middle Ages were more advanced and sophisticated than classical Rome. And we need only cite an enormous list of technologies employed by the peoples of medieval Europe, which were unknown to the Romans. This includes windmills, paper, all right, plow, uh, plowing and stir up horses, shoes, new musical instruments such as the violin, the bagpipe, Arabic numerals, algebra, the steel of alcohol. These sound like American Indians. Distillation of alcohol. They got some of that Jack Bean, you feel me? Double and triple sailing mast on ships for tracking into the wind and etc. All by the 11th century. Mm. All by the 11th century. The Algonquin Conquest. Sounds familiar. Mm. Who built these structures? I would assume it's the same people who built the same structures over here because it's the same style except for the ones over here in America is older than the ones in Europe. That's what they're not telling you. This is what he's telling you, though. These buildings in Europe wasn't built by the Romans, man. There had to be somebody here other than them because the, the Romans was, the classical Romans are incapable. So who is these highly advanced so-called Romans and the stuff that they was bringing and stuff that when you read the Algonquin Conquest and Atlantis, the antediluvian world and, you know, the, the, geolo uh, the geological sketches that tell you America's the real old world and Kataga A. Baga, the West African historian that's telling you about South American Indians and they bringing all this type of stuff, bringing civilization and they went to Europe. Huh. All right, so Pete Gang, let's continue going because it's, it's definitely going to get deep. This is just this chapter one. We on, all right? So, so they said that the Romans was incapable. All right? We talking about these people bringing all type of stuff, even alcohol. All right? And these were followed into the 12th and 15th century by mechanical clocks, magnifying lenses, and a whole gamut of agricultural innovations as well as epoch-making innovations as gunpowder, right? Voodoo chief in the building, peace, peace, right? They said these people even had gunpowder. But when you research who invented gunpowder, it's gonna tell you Nagas. I shit you not, research it. They're going to tell you the Nagas created gunpowder. So how did the innovations of gunpowder is in Europe and Rome? Who is these Romans bringing these advanced civilizations? Right? But because we have great teachers like Voodoo Chief, we have great teachers like Rashad Poet, great teachers like David and others and myself and everything like that, right? And, and a lot of them, we know that all this stuff came from America and we took civilization around the world. So is one reason why they reconstructed history to hide the fact that American Negroes been around the world spreading civilization? Instead, they give it to the Africans when in reality, the Africans got it from us. Mm. All right, P. Gang. Let's flip the page real quick. And this shit getting real Tartarian ish, right? 